Welcome to Splatterlots! Excited? I am excited and intrigued to see how these 12 fearless contestants will fare against the devastatingly diabolical defenders as they strive to capture the highly coveted crown of Splatterlot. Will the defenders keep the young attackers at bay? Will the attackers survive the many challenges that lie ahead? And will we be allowed to do the rest of the show in our normal voices? Yes, my friend, all of these! Stop! Hello, he's Dick. He's Doc. <laughs> and this is Splat a lot. But what is Splat a lot? It's a kingdom which has a pretty unique way of choosing its next monarch. On a pretty regular basis, it challenges 12 young warriors to lay siege to its castle and capture the Splat a lot crown. But in order to do so, they will have to outwit the Splat a lot defenders. Their sole mission is to make the attackers' lives as hard as possible. Mm. In order to find a worthy champion, our warriors will have to face three unique and unforgiving challenges. Precisely half of them will fail at the very first hurdle, which is a time trial around the Splat a lot moat. The fastest six will move on to do battle in the foam field stockade. It won't be easy, and two of the attackers won't make it. However, the remaining four will compete in the grand finale in an attempt to seize the kingdom's crown. So, here's the first course. The calm before the storm, the fizzy drink before the burp. Nice one. Thank you very much. We start with those baffling barrels. Oh, I'm easily baffled. That sounds so proud about it. Then we head over to the slippery slope. Although most people tend to head down it. Yeah, then it's the stomach churning, rolling mace. You could churn a lot of cheese in that. Onto the beastly battle axes. They're rubbish. What do you mean? For making cheese. Yeah. The rope bridge of disaster is next. Hey, you could uh, use it as a cheese slice. Will you stop going on about cheese? Me? Uh, anyway, the perilous pole vault completes its perilous course. No, it doesn't. We need a bit more peril. How much? This much. Scarier than my collection of jam lids, it's Splatterlot's very own gaggle of defenders. Here's Nitrous. She's got attitude and she's not afraid to use it. Sinkor's got body odour and he's not afraid to use it. Yeah, well, shaden has got a ponytail and she's not afraid to use it. No? So, with the defenders in place, let's get started. Ooh. Hello? Yeah? Don't worry. I got this. I'm gonna get the crown. Yeah, OK, but how did you get my number? Anyway, she's off. Oh, and it didn't take too long for the barrels to come into play. Yeah, this doesn't look promising. Well, if you like splats, thwacks and splooshes, then it's a very promising start indeed. Davina! They're waiting <laughs> for you. Oh. Now at the mace, she looks very nervous. Oh, she's going back into the moat. Ah, yes, Ravina has the dubious honour of being the first attacker to be splatted by the mace. Well, she hasn't given up yet, but neither have the defenders. <laughs> Ooh. I, 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 oh, oh, look at that! That's good our first point, point, flat splash of the day. How will she deal with the uh, battle axes? Hello? It'll take more than that to get rid of me. Uh, okay, Ravina, but stop calling me during the show. Besides, I think you should concentrate on the battle axes. The pretty tree. Oh! I think we've been cut off. But that was quite a fall, but hopefully her imaginary foam was now damaged beyond repair. Ravina has made it to the bridge, and at last she's found something she's good at. Nitrous won't be happy, but then when's she ever happy? Oh, Ravina was making some real progress, but along comes the perilous pole hole, and she's down. Eesh. The defenders think they've done a good job. And Ravina has posted a time of 7 minutes and 29 seconds. Obviously, it's early days, but that kind of time is often in the danger zone. Here's the next attacker. It's Jacob. I'm in the band, and I'm going to rock this castle. Oh, he's a very confident young man, isn't he? Slippy. Liar! Well, Tinkor is trying his best to dent that confidence and his hip replacement. Oh, yeah, yeah, splash, splash, splash. But Jacob's racing around the course. All good things must come to an end, my dear. Yeah, Nitrous has turned him into a frog. No, she hasn't. I just pressed the frog generator button on the graphics machine by mistake. <laughs> We've got a button for a frog. It doesn't matter now. Look, look, look. Oh, chicken tikka masala is in the water, and he's finished! Oh, that's a fantastic time. Silly, silly dance. Uh, if I had two hands, I'd clap. I love vice! Speak of autumn. Oh, look, very wet in autumn. Hey, autumn! Fall! Oh. Oh. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, you see, in Canada, where they shoot this, they call autumn fall. It's funny and educational. It's also extremely accurate. There she is, autumn falling. But... Oh, and it uh, looks like she's having a moment on the mace. The defender's loving this indecision. Come on, autumn, it'll be winter soon. <laughs> Oh, today. Oh, yes, sir, oh, she oh, goes oh, across. Oh, oh. Yeah, no, 
da, 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 da. And there she is, heading down the incline, but she can't stop herself. Oh, wait a minute, I've got just the thing for this, next to the frog button. <gasps> a goose? No, it's a swan. A swan dive. Purple is the best! Yeah, OK, Liam, purple's the best what? Guess we'll never know. Oh, look, I found another button. Look, he's on an imaginary skateboard. Yes, but that slope he splatted isn't imaginary. Oh, I, uh, oh, I splatty! I'm your worst nightmare. No, it's clowns for me every time, dear. <laughs> Brilliant work, Tink. The defenders and the course are making life tricky for Liam. Sladdy down, sladdy up, sladdy down. Wet pants. Oh, he's certainly not having a purple patch now, is he? Heels, Presley! I like to dance! Does she like to cross terrifying rolling maces? Oh, No. Shake! Battle, roll, Presley. Get it? Uh, uh, Elvis didn't even sing that one. Oh. How about a smile for Nitrous? Well, the best Presley can do is grimace. <laughs> oh, she's slipping! She's slipping and but she's made it! And Nitrous has got issues with that. I don't know why. Presley's really smiling for her now. There we are, 5 minutes 43. Yes, everybody, I think we do have a situation on our hands. Well, everybody, here's the situation as I see it. So thanks to Gonna. This is a situation comedy. Look, wobbly, 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 blues. <laughs> oh, attacker. What's Satan up to? <laughs> oh, bum, 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 bum. <laughs> Back off his feet, down the incline, and into the water. His pride and his bum bum bum's taking a beating. Well, that's Sarfak's time of six minutes twenty-six. And Nitrous, like the rest of us, is a bit unsure of Sarfak's hands to the left, hands to the right dance. So we're now halfway through round one. Jacob is the fastest with one minute forty-one, and Ravina has the time to beat of seven minutes and twenty seconds. Well, I'd say Jacob is safe, but Ravina hasn't got a chance. Yeah. Oh, oh. Sorry. Hello? Oh, hi, Ravina. Yes. It's for you. Hello? Charming. Here's a sneaky peek of the next six attackers. More bumps, thwacks, and splats to come as they all battle it out for the ultimate prize, the Splatalog Crown. Ouch. So, uh, how are you finding today's show? Oh, it's over there, isn't it? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I think you misunderstand me, actually. I meant, uh, are you enjoying the show today? Oh, of course I am, yes. yes. And so is my new defender, the red kneecap. <laughs> As ever, the defenders are doing a great job. Shaven and Tinkor are like a well-oiled machine, and very oily. And Nitrous has been in a foul mood all day. <laughs> In fact, she's probably angry that uh, these six even managed to finish the course. <laughs> the time to beat again is uh, Ravina's 7 minutes and 20 seconds, and can anyone better Jacob's impressive 1 minute and 41 second? Well, we'll know shortly. Here's our next attacker, Maddie. Can I have your number? No, you can't! It was bad enough with Ravina earlier. <laughs> Oink! Oh, and with tumbling skills like that, don't call us, we'll call you. But we won't call her. Well, that's what don't call us, we'll call you means. Right, fast forwarding to the bridge now, and Nitrous has Maddie in her sights. It's all about weight distribution. But, 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 look, look, look. Oh, no, mango chutney. Did you see that? What? The giant arrow. Where? There. No wonder she fell in. Oh, he's not messing about with the graphics. Well, despite all that, Maddie finishes in a reasonable time of six minutes for ah, 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 six minute forty-four. Here's attacker number eight, Martin. Crazy socks! Crazy. It looks like we got a live one here. And Tiny Tim's all there with an ankle biter. But Martin just shrugs it off. Will the battle axes slow him down? Uh, hippity boink boink. Ah, swift moving! Attacker! Take this! Even Nitrous's old English has no effect. No one gets past me, boy! He's now over the bridge. Uh -huh. No, he's not. Into the chilli sauce. And while he slips and slides, let's get to know Nitrous. What kind of music do you like, dear? Take that! Oh, good choice. Jason Orange. Yeah, meanwhile, Martin has made it in a lightning 109. That's the fastest so far. Let's meet Ethan. I am a pro-Asian ninja monkey. Oh, that's quite a title to live up to, fella. But he's doing well so far. Yes, and he's pounced like a silly cat over the battle axes. Only a commentator's curse will stop him now. Brilliant work, Ethan. Oh, Wibblebridge, why did I say that? Told you. Who evil laughs? <laughs> oh, I've really done it now. He's fallen all over the place. Don't put yourself down. Nitrous is mainly to blame, squirting all over the place. A splishy, wishy, washy. But he makes it in a very respectable time of three minutes and 30 seconds. And there you are. 
Another very silly victory dance. French lava! Absolutely no idea what he's talking about. Oh, yeah, something tells me this guy's going to be a barrel of laughs. Yeah, very good, very good, barrel of Very good, very good! Yes. So he's very, very, uh, very slow up the slippery slope. <laughs> really makes him an easy target for the defenders, doesn't it? John just takes his first tentative steps on the rolling maze and... That is officially the biggest splat of the tournament so far. Welly flop. Big splat. <laughs> <laughs> it really has got a wavy words, doesn't he? Big splat. Uh, John's back up, though, but as ever, the incline lives up to his name. What marvellous sounds! I love horses! I love her unbridled energy. It's a horse joke, see? Yeah, it's no joke for Swiss as she falls at the first fence. It's a barrel. It's a metaphor. Well, now it's a horse look. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> I love our banter. And meanwhile, Theresa has just made it to the mace. But look at Shaden there, stuffing that paintball cannon. And Theresa is on the receiving end, but she's not letting them get to her. And now I think she's got the wrong idea of the mace. Yes, look at that. She seems to be riding it like a watery steed. And she's past the finishing post in 7 minutes, 24 seconds. You can pull all the faces you like, Sharice, but that won't be good enough. I'm going to own this castle. Ah, oh, yes, she thinks she's uh, on one of those property programmes. Well, the asking price is a barrel to the body. <laughs> oh, yes, looks like she can afford it. Yes, now you see why all the attackers wear padding. To protect those barrels. They're not cheap, you know. Shaden and Tinker have made great use of their splat zooka. And once more, they have upended an attacker on the impossible incline. Great teamwork from the defenders. Mm. And Shaden kisses her Tinkor. So, that's it. All right, see ya. No, that's it for round one. Oh, yes. We started with 12 attackers, but only the sixth fattest will go through to the next round. I, I think you mean fastest. Hmm? Fastest. Yes, sorry, right, yes. So the six fastest are Martin, Jacob, Ethan, Liam, Presley and Sarvak. The Rolling Stones. Have they got what it takes in the stockade? <laughs> Actually, what does it take? Oh, hang on. I've got a list. Mm. You need to like the taste of foam, slime and goo. Mm. Is that it? That's that. Mm. That's a lot. That's splat a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so, in round two, we sadly say goodbye. OK. See ya. <laughs> to two more attackers. Oh. <laughs> Where did you go? Just there, look. Oh. Bring me back a prezzy. Naturally. Oh. <laughs> What is it? <clears throat> Here's a reminder of the competitors. Martin, Jacob, Ethan, Liam, Presley and Sarthak. Leonard Skinner. <laughs> so, uh, who do you think will make it through? Well, I quite like Colin. Look, there isn't a Colin. You just read out all of the names and Colin wasn't one of them. Pedant. So, in a Colin-free round, here's what the attackers must do. They start with a little spin on the wheel of certain doom. Then, in a state of dizziness, they make their way over to the ladder rungs. The rungs slot into place to form ladders, which in turn are the only way out of the stockade. Of course, all the rungs are different sizes, so it's harder than it looks. Once you've built your ladder, you need a flag, and this is where it gets really mean, because there aren't enough flags to go round. Two attackers won't make it, but even those who survive will suffer because we have a new lineup of defenders. The name's Kookaburra. A Kookaburra is an Australian bird known for its mad hysterical cackle. This is Gildar. A Gildar is someone who spends too much money on hair products. And finally, Crocmess, a creature that's half crockery and totally unnecessary. It'll be our pleasure to see you fall. And fail. <laughs> the attackers remain strapped to the wheel until the klaxon. In the orange stripe is Martin, Liam in the yellow, Ethan in the blue helmet, Jacob has sporting pink, Presley's gone for orange, and Sarthak is green to go. Gildar is already foaming at the cannon, he can't wait. It's like you're the bread and that's the butter, do you know what I mean? It's just like a warm sensation. Sounds like Kookaburra's as bad as you with those metaphor thingies. So they're off, and Ethan still has his wits about him, making the first break at the ladder rung. But Jacob and Martin are pretty close behind. Oh, oh and Ethan's also the first to take a hit. This is a really bad start for everyone involved. Not me, though. The bickering has begun already, but Kookaburra's right. He's splatting everyone. I'm amazing. The attackers are in a right spin on the wheel, and Presley is suffering. Martin, however, has built half his ladder already. The weapons don't seem to be working. I thought animated bird calls? Ah! 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 Oh, there it is, that mad 
hysterical cackle I was talking about earlier. Oh, well, it's different, and it seems to have had an effect on Presley, who splat straight into the spinning hexagon. Knuffle papa splat. Here's the view from the water cannon. Ethan and Martin are way out in front. Liam isn't. Anyone need to rinse? Hey, his name's Kookaburra, and he's really kooky. How long have you been waiting to say that? 11 minutes and 27 seconds. Martin has now finished his ladder, but the trouble is that just attracts more attention from the defenders. Oh, look, no, that's not the kind of attention anybody wants. If we slow this down and get the right angle, you can see that Martin has just taken a gob full of slime. Back to the action. The Wheel of Certain Doom is slowing the attackers down, but there has been a development. Ethan has actually crept ahead because he has the first of the four flags. Crocknes is there with her slime stick, but Ethan's too strong and is the first to complete round two. This makes it so much harder for the rest. The water cannon is creating one giant slippery hazard. It's a domino effect as Martin creates an avalanche. It's an avalanche of dominoes. What? Okay, you describe it. Right, well, the guy at the top, he hits the other guy, and okay, yeah, it's an avalanche of dominoes. Martin now has his flag and completes the course. That means only two flags remain for the four attackers, and Jacob seems to have one of them. Gildar has the splat bow, and someone is going to get splatted. It's Presley. Let's slow that down. Okay. It's Presley. No, if we slow the pictures down, we'll see it's a direct splat from Gildar. Meanwhile, Jacob has the third flag, leaving Presley, Liam and Sarthak to fight over the fourth. Gildar aiming his splat bow at poor Sarthak now, and the poor guy's in a complete daze. Whoa, watch out for the big red turny thing. <laughs> Presley now completing... No, not completing a lot of wacker splatter. Plop, plops. You know what they say, don't you? Be nice to people on the way up, because it's a long way down. Oh, and it looks like Sarthak has recovered from his days, and he has the last flag. <laughs> oh, trouble is, after that tumble, he'll be back in another days before you know it, good lad. But no, he's at the top brandishing his flag of victory. Brandishing his flag of victory. I like that. Yes. And here are the other flagging brandishers. No, that didn't sound so victorious, did it? No. Going through to round three are Martin, Jacob, Ethan and Sarthak. Going home are Presley and Liam. Well, how do you follow that? <laughs> With the round three, I would have thought. Oh, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> so if you're the kind of person who likes to watch high-impact splat fests, then this is the show for you. If not, then maybe you should try knitting. <laughs> well, how do you follow that? <laughs> With the round three, I would have thought. Oh, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. So, if you're the kind of person who likes to watch high impact foam filled splat fests, then this is the show for you. If not, then maybe you should try uh, some knitting. <laughs> or maybe brass polishing. <gasps> Origami. <laughs> or slapping yourself around the chops with a large wet kipper. Sadly, uh, there's no time, as we have to say farewell. All right, see ya. Well, no to Presley and Liam. Ah, will you stop doing that? Sorry. <clears throat> Which leaves us with our final four attackers. Oh, yes, Martin, Jacob, Ethan and Sarthak. Mm. Their mission is simple. All they have to do is be the first to complete the course and capture the crown. Trouble is, the course is pretty tricky. Plus, all six defenders come out to play for this one. Do you think they know they're on camera? So here is the course in all its glory. The attackers start with a pole drop into the funky foam. Then it's teeter totter time, followed by a leap onto the lily pads. The water wall is then all that stands between the attackers and the coveted Spatlock crown. So, Dom, who do you think will win today's final? Well, uh, you know, in round one, Jacob was very fast, but Martin was even faster, you know, completing the course in an amazing one minute and nine seconds. Mm, yes, but speed isn't everything, as Ethan proved by winning round two. Yeah, and here's the most interesting stat of all, folks. Sarthak was the last to qualify in both round one and round two. He's mm. obviously a survivor. Yeah, could, could he win this? Well, let's head back down to the course to find out. Hey! Off they go, down the poles, into the foam. Crockness there with the bucket of slime for starters. And here's how they line up from top to bottom. It's Sarfak, Ethan, Jacob and Martin. Oh, and the teeters lead as always to do some tottering. It's crazy, it's making my cathode ray to go absolutely nuts. Yes, but it's always good for increasing the splat count. And uh, how is the splat count? Oh, it's fine, thank you very much for asking. <laughs> Too bad. Yeah, she's talking about your sense of humour. No, she was talking about your hair. Well, this is what I think about your hair. Cos splatter, whacker, nicky, nicky. Nicky-noo. Well, that makes no sense at all. I mean, look, even Nitrous is confused with Nicky nacky new and Tinkor is too. Look, Nicky nacky new. All right, well, they better snap out of it because Jacob has made it over the cheaters. 
Well, Nitrous has taken your advice, and down goes Jacob Lily Splat. Yeah, she doesn't need the slime stick. That scary voice alone would do the trick. Oh, that rhymes. Uh, right, here's a nice little touch. Our first attack crosses the barrier. The water wall is turned on. Oh, yes, makes sense, that. It's probably quite expensive running a fantasy splat-driven tournament every week. And, you know, we could all do with being a little bit green. Yes, yes, you're right, you're right. It's not exactly the time to have this discussion. South like a Martin are really struggling out there. Well, it's never a good time when I have something to say, is it? Will you just get over yourself? Let's get it together, people! Let's oh, yes, he's right. Uh, sorry, Gildar. You're so silly, sorry. Uh, Martin takes another huge spill, and Gildar now has his sights set on Jacob. He fires. Oh, but Jacob avoids the paintballs. In slow motion, we can see how close that was. Precision frog leaping there from Jacob. Sarfak and Ethan still struggling on the teeters. Oh, but this looks more promising for Martin. No, he's down again. Back to Ethan, and yes, he is over this time. But this looks ominous from the defenders. What? It's the rarely seen reverse Y splat manoeuvre. And why is it rarely seen? Well. Because Gildar and Kookaburra rarely practice it. Yes, I doubt we'll never see it again. Back to the teasers, and Sarvac seems to be running on empty. Oh, and Martin does too. Oh, hey, splatty! Gee, how couple shows. So the defenders are just concentrating on their lily pads, and oh, Jacob is suffering out there. And it's not getting any easier as Ethan is now right on his tail. Not for long, Kookaburra will sort him out. Ooh! What kind of manoeuvre is that? Fortunately, Tinkle has no vital organs in his head. <laughs> Jacob now at the water wall, but it's all still very close. Ethan is at the base too. The tension is electric. You can almost taste the atmosphere with a knife and a fork and a spoon. Look, will you just calm down? Hang on! No! Don't calm down! You're right! It looks like Jacob's gonna get there first! And... Yes! He holds the crown aloft. It's all over. Stop everything. Nothing more to see. It's over. End of. Finny. That's all, folks. OK. Bye, everyone. No, not you. You know what? I don't care anymore. I don't care. I don't care. It doesn't upset me. Ah, uh, I don't believe you, Gildar. Boy, was that an amazing finale? What are you watching? <laughs> it was one of the best we've ever had. I know. Uh, OK, look, it's time for your favourite bit of the show. Oh, OK. Bye. <laughs> the other bit. Oh, yes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Splat of the Day. Well, it all started fairly innocently in the stockade, but then Martin loses his grip and suddenly it's an avalanche of domino effects. Oh, not again. <laughs> and he then takes Jacob out, but it's a buy one, get one free bog off avalanche of domino effects. Are you still talking? So? We just have the formality of the crowning ceremony to go. But first, let's remind ourselves just how Jacob made it to the top. In round one, he posted the fastest time of the day, a sign of things to come. Life wasn't so easy in the stockade, but he still picked up a flag, and that's what counts, a chuckle cloth. But it was back to business in round three, where he led all the way and claimed that all-important crown. Woo-ha! OK, we'll leave you with a flag ceremony. So, until next time, bye for now. Oi! You can't leave now. Well, I, I don't know, do I? It's confusing. I'm the king of the castle! And we're Dick and Dom. So, until next time, keep, keep splatting! splatting.